My name is Eric Parij. Eric Parij in I am from Gallup, New Mexico. Not the Georgia de uh in the shop. Um, I am a maker, I am a weaver, I have been blessed with my hands and they have passed down so many stories and so many objects and so many um, memories. This practice of mine being um, passed down uh, through my hands and uh, through just the, the genealogy, I guess, of <laughs> my brain. And um, thinking about what it means for work to be historical and what is technology, how does technology align with that? Well, the technology of, of fiber um, and the tools that go into it um, to allow for blankets to be made, which when you think about the utilitarian use of warmth or comfort or protection, um, they are this genius invention by our ancestors that have allowed not only for that, but then also for um, physical survival of being able to sell and trade these objects, um, being able to raise the sheep that um, provide the material, but then also provide the food and nourishment of the body of the, the families that own those sheep. But then further beyond that, cultural survival of the stories that are woven into them. Um, so all this, all this element of survival, how do we celebrate survival through the means of tools and through the means of the methodology of creating objects. So this series of works is called Jaw Cloth for Yates. Oh, uh, two, two cocoons. Uh, jaw Cloth is the Dene word for earring. Jaw is your ear or earlobe. Cloth means a rope. So an ear rope, something that goes through your ear. Uh, four, the letter four. Yates O, which is uh, one of our holy figures, or many of our holy figures. Um, so the big monster or the big god. And this particular piece behind me is called The Loom Between Me and You. And this is my first time ever installing it in this way where um, it's against, more directly against the, um, a wall. And I wanted the piece itself to kind of reflect upon what, or shine light um, upon the innards of what a weaving is, on its bones and on its veins. Um, oftentimes when I'm looking at a weaving, I can see the inside and the outside at the same time. And when I look at my own work, I think about what sort of structures make it up, whether that's the material itself or where the material comes from, um, whether that was gifted to me, whether I purchased that material, whether I uh, spun, dyed, carded, the yarn. Um, it's all this uh, amalgamation of many hands going into the work. So this uh, a loom between me and you, meaning while there is sometimes a border between us, it's the spiritual plane that allows us to weave ourselves together. And as we hold each other's hands, um, we are now woven either in that moment or in the future or in the past. And this piece behind me is a celebration of that and a collection of those memories. Um, and then going uh, to think about what it means to adorn yourself and wear earrings. Earrings allow for our bodies to remember because as you navigate throughout the day, sometimes your body isn't able to take in as much knowledge or, or beauty as it's able to as you know we work and as we um, see many things. And so your earrings are listening just as much as you are and your rings are touching just as much as you are. And so when you put them on the next time, they hold on those memories uh, for you. So in a lot of ways, my work is these totems of memories, not only culturally and personally, but then from being um, in different places around uh, the country and being uh, touched by uh, strangers and uh, new friends and old friends. And so they, they collect and as they are touched and as they scar, so does my body. And so a lot of ways my work is uh, a reminder for me of who I have met and what I have heard and what I have learned. When you look at a piece like this where there's the vertical strings of the warp, um, as the weft intertwines and touches um, the warp itself and these strings start touching each other, I think about what goes, what happened with those strings before they wove amongst each other. They ran through my fingers and then they ran through uh, maybe my mother's fingers who helped me roll a skein of yarn into a ball 
And then um, before that, maybe it was someone that worked at a store that handled them, or maybe it was a direct uh, community member that gifted me this yarn or the wool. And so all, this, all these fingers touching um, and coming together is something that I've always been really proud of and I've considered my work 100% a collaboration in that way because it's no way um, a, a solo endeavor. It's um, so many people coming together to you know, hold hands in that way. Um, but then also I've been thinking about how the structures of these, these objects that I make um, exist. And so I've been thinking a lot of individual parts as beads. And so working in this way for this exhibition, um, where uh, originally it was two of the same earring pieces. And as exhibitions happen and things get moved, um, I decided to disassemble one and re-beat it into a different type of earring. And so thinking now as the objects and components that go into my work as one never still or static, but instead just a smaller part of a, a bigger whole. And so um, as, I, as I make things, I often unmake to learn about those individual beads and those individual parts. And if you move them a centimeter, if you move them a foot, if you move them a meter, um, and start arranging them as a puzzle of sorts, um, they kind of, oftentimes, when you give them the agency to create themselves. And so as I disassembled one earring and laid out the pieces on the floor, I saw that it looked like a ladder to climb. And so one of the earrings became a ladder earring. And the ladder earring kind of looks like a loom. And then the loom is reflective of this loom. And so they all speak to each other in that way. And that's, I, that's a celebration for me.